This is Thomas J. Seaborn Photography. In today's video, I am going to kind of compare and contrast uh, Silver FX Pro and the normal process I use to convert my images to black and white in Photoshop. So here we have an image from Hetch Hetchy in Yosemite National Park that I took using my Lee Big Stopper. It's a 10 stop neutral density filter. Typically these images end up with weird color casts because of the, the heavy filter that the light must pass through. It always tends to have a bluish uh, green cast to the image and a lot of times you lose uh, details kind of in this overexposed area that you can see where my mouse is. So I like to convert these to black and white. I had played around with Silver FX1 uh, a long time ago. I never really used it all that much because I was pretty happy with the results I got using Photoshop. But let me show you how cool Silver Effects Pro 2 really is. It's pre-calculating something. What it's calculating, I don't know. Hopefully the awesomeness that this image can become. So over here to the left in Silver Effects Pro, it has all these presets that you can easily adjust over here to the right, which I really, really like. Um, film types and finishing adjustments I'm just not going to play around with because I've never really shot black and white film before so I wouldn't know the difference. Um, this image here doesn't have enough contrast. Um, I think the key to making great black and white images is to really get your whites whites and your blacks blacks where they need to be white and where they need to be black. Um, that sounds kind of like a broad overstatement but it really is true. that. Um, you really want to get your contrast right and that's all contrast is is the how white you want your whites and how black you want your blacks and what areas that they will cover so um over here to the right you can see that all the that silver effects did here was adjust the structure which is just uh basically it's like the micro contrast adjustment that uh you would see um i still think that the uh we could use a little bit more contrast so i'm going to bump it up just a little bit this image almost looks like an HDR image. Um, so here's the before and here's the after. I really, really, really like what it's doing. Um, I'm going to play around with the color filters real quick, but I believe that over here on the slider on the left, it will show you um, the different colors. Apparently not it used to. Um, classics. In the old version, it used to allow you to show uh, the effect of the, the, the color filters would have. So let's just click through uh, this ourselves. So here's the red filter, which is going to typically darken the blues. Uh, whatever color filter you're choosing is going to uh, make the opposite end of that color spectrum uh, uh, darker. So you can see here with the blue filter, the blue sky becomes brighter, which we clearly don't want. So let's go with the red filter. And uh, again, it's kind of cool in Silver FX Pro. You can just quickly kind of scroll through to see what how the color filter affects different parts of the image. So I actually like not quite a full red. It's almost more of like an orange. Eh, red actually looks really good. So let's just play with the strength real quick. I think with all these things, uh, it's good to be subtle, just like in life. So here's our before and our after with just a quick little uh, run through in Silver Effects Pro. So um, I guess I should have saved this image before. Uh, crap. Okay, I know what we're going to do. Watch this. We're going to hit OK. And I think it does it as a filter. So what we can now do, uh, it's Photoshop is operating very slowly. What we're going to do from here is we'll just make a duplicate of this image and throw away that layer. I don't know what Photoshop is doing or why it's acting like it's on crack, but it is. So here we are. Uh, our before and to our after, that image really kicks quite a lot of ass, actually. I really, really, really like that. Um, but let me see if I can get kind of the same results in Photoshop. So I'm going to do what I told you. We're going to make a little duplicate here. And now we're going to chuck this black and white layer right into the trash can. 
when I make a black and white using Photoshop, I always make a nice new layer for it. So we'll go up to adjustments and then we'll go to black and white. So right off the bat, this image is not that contrasty. So let's go ahead and darken up our blues and our cyans. Maybe not with the cyan. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting the same results that uh, Silver Effects Pro gave me. But I'm going to go ahead and hit OK because I think that we can kind of get close to what we did with Silver Effects Pro using our Curves tool. Um, look at our black output down here on the histogram. You really want to have your output at the right at the uh, right where uh, your histogram starts. Same is true over here with the whites. So that's kind of setting your white point and your black point to a much more appropriate point. Uh, big, big difference in the contrast already. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the whites just a little bit and drop some of those blacks down just a little bit. So that's a pretty good, pretty good conversion on the black and white in my opinion. So that's where we started. That's where I got to just using the basic tools in Photoshop. So let's take a look at the quick dirty version I just did here in Photoshop versus the quick dirty version I did with Silver Effects Pro. Silver Effects Pro is just a lot better. Let's not even talk about the structure adjustment that the Silver Effects Pro made that brings out a lot of the details like in the rock and in the sky, in the sky I mean the clouds, but just look at the tone differences in the sky area right here. Um, I don't think that's a pure white. I mean that's a pure white I almost wish I could combine these two images and kind of, because uh, I almost feel like looking at back to back that this is lacking in contrast in the hills, uh, in the rocks and the trees and shit or whatever. And I feel like this is kind of over the top in the sky, but to each their own. I mean, honestly, the Silver Effects Pro version is probably going to be better. So there you go. That's just the quick differences in what uh, Silver Effects Pro Pro can uh, Silver FX Pro 2 can do versus the methods I like to use in Photoshop. Uh, thanks for checking out my video.